Over the past 10 years, the UL Firefighter Safety Research Institute's been conducting research examining fire dynamics. How fires grow and spread in a home has been extremely important to the fire service to understand how they can operate as safely and efficiently as possible on the fire ground. We wanted to take what we've learned over the past 10 years and expand that into the fire investigation community. Our project is using full-scale structures where we're going to change the ventilation by opening a door or opening a window and look at its impact on the burn pattern. So initially we'll conduct replicate fires with the building closed and then we'll start to make openings in the building in subsequent tests and see how that changes the fire damage, the growth rate of the fire, the impact of the fire, and how that would impact the investigator's ability to find the area of origin as well as the cause of the fire. But our real focus is on the area of origin and how the patterns might lead the investigator to that end. So let's take a walk through the uh, Colonial. So as we make entry, you'll notice these uh, probes. These are bi-directional probes and they'll get swung in front of the door when we're ready to test. Uh, they measure temperature as well as gas velocity, which means that we get not only the speed of the gas, but the direction it's going. Um, so we can tell whether hot gases are exiting the building or fresh cool air is entering the building. Throughout the structure, we have thermocouples and you'll see here that they stretch all the way to the ceiling, so we're measuring at intervals of every foot from the ceiling all the way down to the floor. So we have an idea where the hot gas layer is at all times and where the cool air may be. We're also monitoring for oxygen concentration. So here we have a oxygen intake at four feet above the floor and another at four inches above the floor. You'll notice that there are several taps in the wall and those measure pressure. So they're intended to tell us where we have areas of high pressure and areas of low pressure. We have carpet, we have outlets that are energized. You can see the lamps are lit up. We have some other targets such as the phone on the table. We have a small battery powered electric clock. Uh, the television is also energized. So again, we're looking for effects that investigators might see. How does it fail? How does it melt? How does it come apart? Uh, and then we'll understand the conditions that that occurred. So that's the important part here, that we have the measurements to go along with the phenomena, the resulting phenomena that we're seeing, so that we can develop some cause and effect relationships. We've documented the house uh, with photographs prior to the fire. After the fire, we'll document it again. And then as we remove the furniture, we'll take photographs and document layers of the house, pull up the floor and, and document the subfloor as well. Self-ignition in four, three, two, one, ignition. Passing 212 at the ceiling of the living room. And the back of the sofa, starting to see some drop down on the carpet behind it. Oxygen's dropping, passing. 15%, it's gonna put itself out. Starting to see temperatures drop, flames are disappearing. Oxygen's down to 9% in the upper layer. Temperatures are falling in the, uh, the living room. Temperatures are below 650 at the ceiling and falling. So what we need to do now is start to remove the furniture carefully, start to dismantle uh, the scene and document the scene with uh, photographs as we pull the layers back so we can look at, uh, get a better view of the pattern on the wall and a better view of the pattern on the ceiling. But these are all patterns or fire effects that need to get put together to get an understanding of how all the puzzle pieces fit together between 
where the fire damage is, where there was oxygen present, and where there was an oxygen present. Where we actually had flame combustion and where we just had uh, thermal effects or pyrolysis uh, ongoing in the room. This project is important to a number of areas. One, it's important to our suppression firefighters because they can really start to understand the fire pattern within the structure and the impact of ventilation on that fire pattern. And we also look at it to our investigators that we can actually start to understand the impact of the ventilation or chosen tactics into their investigation, looking at cause and origin. And another important aspect of it, it actually hopefully drives that investigative community to really have discussions with the suppression community so they start to understand how to operate or how to choose your tactics suppression-wise, but then the investigators can start to understand the impact of the selective tactics into their investigation. So it causes that dialogue across the cross disciplines, which then educates both sides and it makes, it more, makes us a more effective service overall. As we finish these experiments, we will continue to analyze all of the data and video with our technical panel of fire investigation experts from around the country. We'll put together key findings and develop an online training program that will easily take the science to the streets for fire investigators around the world.